Since the first Star Wars movie in 1977, outer space ships and rockets have made sci-fi fans want to know more about outer space. Eventually, the space programs in the world gained popularity and lots of eyes on them. What we see as fiction, like living on new planets, might just become true one day. You might know where I'm going with this. Yes, I'm talking about Musk's dream of taking humans to Mars in his Starship. In today's video, we'll take a look at how Starship and other rockets compare. To begin with, what exactly are rockets and starships? Starships theoretically are large, manned spaceships used for interstellar travel that is meant to take you between two planetary systems. Starship is SpaceX's rocket that's going to take humans to Mars in the near future. Whereas the word rocket can mean various different things, like tall, thin, round vehicles, or a type of engine or vehicle that uses the engine. Rockets are mainly used for fireworks, weaponry, ejection seats, launch vehicles for artificial satellites, human spaceflight, and space exploration. The most common type of high-power rocket are the chemical rockets, because they create high-speed exhaust by the combustion of a fuel with an oxidizer. They work on Newton's principle of the third law of motion, which states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Rockets also work by action and reaction law. They push forward by expelling their exhaust in the opposite direction at high speed which can therefore work in the space vacuum. Moreover, rockets work more effectively in space than in the Earth's atmosphere. To control their flight, rockets must rely on momentum, airfoil, auxiliary reaction engines, gimbal thrust, momentum wheels, deflection of the exhaust stream, propellant flow, spin, and gravity. Rockets use aerospace-grade aluminum or titanium. Both metals are very strong but lightweight for the mainframe. However, carbon composite structures are being researched for future use on mainframes since aluminum melts at high re-entry temperatures. Rockets are made up of four different parts. The structural system, also called the frame, which is similar to the fuselage of an airplane. The payload system of a rocket that depends on the rocket's mission. The guidance system that may include very sophisticated sensors. And the propulsion system that consists of liquid fuel and oxidizers. The latest rocket today is the Falcon 9 by SpaceX. It is a reusable two-stage rocket designed and manufactured by SpaceX for reliable and safe transport of people into Earth's orbit and beyond. It is the world's first orbital class reusable rocket. SpaceX is able to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket because of its reusability, which in turn becomes very cost efficient for the company. The Saturn V was an expendable rocket NASA built so astronauts could go to the moon. It was called a heavy lift vehicle because of its powerful lift capacity. This rocket could carry 310,000 pounds or 140,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. To this date, the Saturn V remains the only launch vehicle that has carried humans beyond low Earth orbit. Between December of 1968 and December of 1972, 24 astronauts were launched to the moon for the US crewed Apollo missions. It flew a final time in 1973 with no crew members to launch the space station Skylab into Earth's orbit. It is also worth mentioning that NASA also created a Gemini launch vehicle called the Titan II and had a greater thrust to weight ratio than the Saturn V. Other recent US launch vehicles have a lower launch capacity to low Earth orbit compared to the Saturn V. The Falcon Heavy vehicle manufactured by SpaceX has the maximum payload capacity of 140,700 pounds or 63,800 kilograms. The Atlas V has a capacity of 41,478 pounds or 18,814 kilograms. The US Delta IV Heavy's capacity is 63,470 pounds, or 28,790 kilograms, and the European Ariane 5ES delivers up to 46,000 pounds, or 21,000 kilograms, and finally, the Russian Proton M can launch 51,000 pounds, or 23,000 kilograms. The Proton M is an abundant launch system used for both commercial and Russian government space launches. The first Proton rocket was launched in 1965. Even in 2021, modern versions of this launch system are being used, which makes it one of the most successful heavy boosters in the history of spaceflight. The Space Launch System, or the SLS, is an American Super Heavy Lift expendable launch vehicle which is still under development by NASA since 2011. It has successfully replaced the Ares-1, Ares-5, and Jupiter-planned launched vehicles. Like the other cancelled proposals, it is designed derived from the components and technology of the earlier Space Shuttle. The United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket was one of the world's most reliable launch vehicles used to deliver exploration spacecraft. This rocket was used to take satellites and classified payloads into space for NASA, the United Air Force, and National Reconnaissance Office, and commercial customers. All these rockets mentioned earlier could be reused only a limited number of times, unlike SpaceX's Starship. Okay, so now that I've told you a lot about rockets, 
let's talk about Starship and the big difference it has with them. Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel. He said the alternative is to become a spacefaring civilization and a multi-planetary species, which I hope you would agree is the right way to go. Musk has often spoke about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes in the settlements of large numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. The Starship system began development in 2016 as a self-funded private spaceflight project. After four years, work began on the Raptor rocket engine that powers both stages. The SpaceX Starship consists of a spacecraft, a Super Heavy booster, and an infrastructure that supports it on the ground. The Super Heavy booster measures about 70 meters or 230 feet long and will be filled with 3,400 metric tons of cryogenic meth locks. This Starship will be a fully reusable transport system capable of carrying up to 100 people to the Red Planet. On top of it, the Starship spacecraft segment adds another 165 feet or 50 meters of height making the fully stacked vehicle a total of 390 feet tall or 120 meters. Not only is it going to be the most powerful rocket, but also the first to be made up of stainless steel hulls, 9 meter or 30 feet in diameter, as it has better thermal properties for spaceflight, which will indeed be cost efficient for the long run. Its strength to mass ratio could be comparable or even better than the earlier SpaceX design alternative of carbon fiber composites across the expected temperature ranges. The booster and some of the spacecraft in the Starship are being designed to be able to land on Earth, recover, and also refly. Some spacecraft remain in space because they are created to be refueled for prolonged long-term operations. The Starship system is designed to carry cargo as well as passengers to low Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars. SpaceX's long-term goal is to establish a permanent human presence on Mars. The upper section of the Starship is supposed to function as a second stage to reach orbital velocity on launches from the Earth, as well as SSTO which stands for Single Stage to Orbit on launches from Mars and the Moon and possibly many more planets in the future. The Starship is designed with the capability of not only re-entering the Earth, but also landing on the designated landing pad. At the bottom of the 50 meter or 160 foot long craft are six highly effective Raptor engines, which were developed over the course of a decade by the SpaceX program. The engine's design meets the amount of propellants that's wasted, and the combustion takes place in stages. In the middle of the vehicle are propellant tanks which are filled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which feed into the Raptor engines. Methane is the fuel and oxygen acts as an oxidizer. An oxidizer is a chemical that burns fuel. By using just an arm of the launch tower to catch the falling booster, SpaceX's innovative ideas make it the best. While sitting on the pad before even launching, this structure provides the engineers and crew members easier access to the spacecraft. Using Martian resources and refueling Starship for the return to Earth would bring a level of self-sufficiency, making travel both more feasible and cost-effective. This, in turn, makes Super Heavy more powerful than the mighty Saturn V launcher used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 70s. According to Musk, when Starship is used for beyond Earth orbit launches to Mars, the overall functioning of the expedition system will compulsorily include propellant production on the Mars surface. The vehicle hence uses four steel landing flaps to control its descent, two of them being positioned near the front and the other two being positioned near the rear of the vehicle. This is similar to how a skydiver uses their arms and legs to control a furry fall. It's quite different from anything else. We're doing a controlled fall, Elon Musk said during a Starship update in 2019. The first prototype Starship serial number, SN8, flew to an altitude of 12.5 kilometers in December of 2020, which unfortunately belly flopped back to Earth, but gave SpaceX valuable engineering information about the final part of the Starship's return from space. SpaceX plans to launch Starship on Super Heavy for its first orbital test flight sometime in 2021. The big difference with the other rockets is how huge the Starship is and how many people it can accommodate. It makes us realize how technology has progressed to such new heights from finding the most feasible and cost-efficient way for the project to keep on exploring life on new planets. Space has opened up new possibilities and we have been in search and exploring it for more than two decades. Starship has not only made it more eco-friendly than other rockets, but also much more effective and more successful, which it is clear from the facts stated above. Let us know what you think of this comparison in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.